Section six, we're looking at testing proportionality. In other words, I have a ratio here, I have a ratio here, are they equal? And there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can do it. We're gonna look at three of those different ways in this section of notes. The first one we're gonna do is look at rewriting things in lowest terms. So take those fractions and reduce them. So I have up here my little, if the ratios in lowest terms are the same, the ratios form a proportion and are considered proportional. We're really just saying a proportion is going to be one fraction that equals another fraction. So if we want to reduce these, I have 6 and 8, and those are both even. So when I look at that, I think divide by 2, divide by 2, and that gives me a 3 in the numerator and a 4 in the denominator. And that's as far as we can reduce that one. So the question is, does our second fraction, our second ratio, also equal 3 fourths? And... You might look at that right away and see a bigger number you can divide by. Like, I look at it and I actually see the 6. Um, I might as well do it, because 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times 8 is 48. So, so 36 divided by 6 is 6. 48 divided by 6 is 8. So, so far it's not 3 fourths, but we could reduce more. And if you had just seen divide by 2, that's totally fine. You could divide by 2, that first one as well. But... Uh, the second fraction, 6 eighths, I can reduce that further by dividing by 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So sure enough, these two things must be equal. It must form a proportion. They must be proportional. Because when I reduce them, I get two fractions that are equal to each other. Example 2 of the book sometimes uses this notation here where they say, is it equal? That's kind of what they mean by that. So they're wondering, hey, is that thing equal? So if we were to reduce these here, I'm going to divide both of those top ones maybe by 2. So divide by 2, divide by 2, and I get half of 32 is 16, half of 10 is 5. And 5 is only divisible by 1 and 5, so it looks like that's as far as that one can go. Now let's find this next bad boy. This one, this might be calculator worthy. They're both even, so I can divide by 2. And, wow, I'm just going to punch that in. I'm feeling a little lazy this morning, I guess. So it's 87. And half of 48 is going to be 24. Whew! So I can't divide by 2. Usually I check, can I divide by 3 next? And if you remember that shortcut for checking, you add them together, 8 plus 7 is 15. And I can divide 15 by 3, so then I know I can divide 87 by 3. And 24, I can divide by 3. 24 divided by 3 is 8. And 87 divided by 3, well, I could always do the long division, I suppose. So I'm not modeling too much cheating behavior. Um, so 3 can go into 8 twice, and that gives me a 6. So I have 27 left. 3 goes into 27 9 times, 9 times 3. So I get 29 over 8. All right. So, so far I have this fraction ratio, this fraction or this ratio, and they're not looking equals. Can I reduce more? Because this I could divide by a 2, but I can't divide that by 2. 2 plus 9 is 11. I can't divide it by 3. So I won't be able to divide this by any evens. So I can skip those. Um, 5, nope. 7, no, 7, 14, 21, 28, 28 would be divisible by 7, 9, nope, so I'm going to say we are done, so if I have this ratio and this ratio, are they proportional, that would be a resounding no, so not proportional, or they're not forming a proportion. So reducing can be nice, especially if you have something like this where they're not too beastly. Once you start getting numbers like this, I'd like to think there's a better way. And sometimes that better way is Roman numeral 2, checking for a common multiplier. And we had just gotten through sections where we had like big charts of numbers, so I wouldn't write this down, but we had say like a, a 3 and a 5, and then this one here would be a 9, and then they say, okay, well, what's the number below the 9? You see, well, hey, if I multiply this by 3, 3 times 3 is 9, so I multiply 5 by 3 to get 15. So when we do that, we get equal ratios or a proportion. Well, we could try that same sort of thing over here. We could say, well, do I get the same multiplier for each of these? 
Well, if I look at that numerator, 6 times 6 gets me 36. So these things will be equal if we can multiply the denominator by 6 and have that work too. And 8 times 6 is 48. So just to review, we did 6 times 6 gives me 36. 8 times 6 gives me 48. So yes, they are equal. So yes, um, a proportion. Or we have two equal fractions. Or yes, they're equal or something like that. This bottom one, ooh, this bottom one's not going to be real pretty because I don't really see something good I can multiply by. Um, let's say you could use a calculator right now. Um, let's say I do 2 times something gives me 16. And a lot of you just right away your head, boom, it's an 8. But how can I combine my 2 and my 6 to get 8? Do you agree if I were to do 16 divided by 2, that gives me the 8? So if I'm trying to figure out this number here, what's my multiplier, I could take the bigger number, the 16, divided by the smaller number. So I'm going to do that with my calculator here. I'm going to say 174 divided by 32. And I don't expect you to do that in your head, so I'll punch that into a calculator. And when I do that, I come up with the multiplier is 5.4375. So 5.4375. Now, if I would round that, it's not going to work out exactly right. So when you do something like this, don't round it. But that's going to work to change my 32 into my 174. So does that also change my 10 into 48? So if I do 10 times 5.4375, well, multiplying by 10 just moves the decimal point over 1. And you could punch it into a calculator if your brain doesn't do that. That's fine. But the point is... We get 174 by multiplying by this. When we multiply 10 by that, we get 54 instead of 48. So this thing here, no, not a proportion, or they are not equal, or something like those. The third way, graphs of proportions. This will be the last way that we do in this section. And if we're going to take this point, this, this fraction, like this here, you could look at that if you wanted to, maybe like it's 3 over 4. And I don't know if that's worth writing. Oh, maybe it is. But if we want to graph it, we need to take and turn that into a point. So this 3 fourths, we would take and make it into the point x is 3, y is 4. And that kind of fits what we have up here, that if x is 3, y is 4, we make it into the point 3, 4. But to do that now with this point, ratio x over y, you want to say do x comma y, and graph the points. And because the example is on the next page, I'm going to quick fill in this line here. If it's a proportion, the points will be in a straight line. So in a straight line. Now, if we only have two ratios, then of course it's only going to be one line. But if you were to get three ratios, um, then you could see, are those three points in a straight line? But now a line connecting the points will go through the origin. And I'm just going to write 0, 0, the point 0, 0 for the origin. And if we go down, let's see if I can get all this on one page. So I'm going to take this, and if I have my points here, so 6 over 8, we change to 6 comma 8. And 36 over 48, we change to 36 comma 48. So now if I look at those, my x values have to go up to at least 40. So I'm going to put a 0, 0. We need to have the origin on there to see if this line's going to go through it. So my x values need to go up to 40. So I'm going to put a 40 over there and try to break it up evenly. So right in the middle, I'm going to put a 20. Cut that in half, I get my 10. Cut the 20 and 40 in half, I get my 30. So that's pretty respectable. My y values go up to 48. So I'm going to say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So I'm going to get up to 50 for that. And I'll write in the 20. You could label on all the lines, but I'm going to skip that. All right, now we want to try to put the points on as accurately as we can. So if this is 10, 
6 is going to be a little bit more than halfway over. I need to go up 8, which is going to be mostly up to that 10 line. So I need a point right about there. So I'll put a blue dot there. So 6, 8, something like that. And now my green dot, that's going to be over 36. So I have 30. 36 is going to be a little over halfway from between 30 and 40. And up to just below 50, so right about there. Let's put a green dot there. 36, 48. Now you'll notice that the accuracy of my answer is going to be limited by how good my drawing is, which is a little scary for some of my drawings. But we want to see, will a straight line through these points go through the origin? And unfortunately, it looks like I'm going to have to fudge my line a little bit. Oops. Something like that. That mine isn't drawn as well as it probably should be because it should actually go through the origin. And I can look at it and say, oh, 6 times 6 is 36, 8 times 6 is 48. I'm doing it that second way, the check for a common multiplier. But you can see that this isn't a perfect way unless you get out graph paper and do like really spectacular graphs. Um, but it should look something like that. So to try to bail out my notes a little bit, I'm just going to make my dots a little bit bigger and say, hey, look. It exactly goes through the origin, but those that watch the video kind of know the truth. So I can say here then that this is proportional. Or that these two are equal, or that it forms a proportion. You can say it several different ways. Six and seven we're just going to real quickly draw in. So what works and what doesn't work. Um, for making something proportional. So if I were to have one point being here, one point being here, if I put a straight line through those two points, something like this here, this one here, as long as my origin is down there in the corner, this one is not proportional. Not proportional for that one. And the other example that won't be proportional would be if you were to have several dots that are something like this. So if I have a dot down here, a dot up there, and a third ratio over there, that also would be not proportional because I can't get a nice straight line through them. So these last two, example six, not proportional because it doesn't go through the origin. Example seven, not proportional because I can't get a straight line through all the points. That's it for section six.